Welcome to our Ambassador Interview Series. Today we have His Excellency Shifaro Shiguti Ulasa, Ambassador of Ethiopia to Korea with us. And we are very honored that His Excellency generously took time out of his busy schedule to join us. Your Excellency, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, you arrived in Seoul in March of 2019, which was precisely two years ago. Uh, and I understand that you normally celebrate uh, Ethiopia's National Adwa Victory Day in March. Um, so please tell us about the historical significance of this day and how it was celebrated differently in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, of course, I arrived in January. Uh, 2019, mm -hmm. and I presented my credential to His Excellency the President of Republic of Korea in March. That's why I'm officially an ambassador in, on March. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, uh, we celebrated our uh, 125th year of Adva victory on mm -hmm. March 2. And the importance of this victory for Ethiopians and for all uh, oppressed people and uh, for especially for Africans and the black people in the world. That is uh, colonial powers. One of the colonial powers was defeated uh, dis disastrously in uh, Adwa in mm. uh, March 1, 19, 1896. And that uh, the, the, the great inspirational uh, event for all Ethiopians and Africans. Uh, of course, we are an independent country, a country which was not colonized by Europeans. But for well, the rest of our Af African brothers and sisters, it was a good and inspir inspirational uh, time to motivate all of us. And since then, we celebrate this day to motivate our uh, new generation and to make it um, a, a flagship uh, type of uh, victory for our development and uh, every movement in Ethiopia. Uh, one of the things you probably noticed upon your arrival in Korea uh, is that we have a lot of coffee shops here and Koreans love coffee. It seems like they just can't seem to live without coffee. And I'm a coffee drinker myself. And uh, Ethiopia is widely regarded as the birthplace of coffee. Um, did, I'm, not, I'm sure you knew, but Koreans drink about 350 cups of coffee a year, which is almost one cup of coffee every day, nearly three times the global average. And uh, I, I, we understand that in Ethiopia, coffee is traditionally considered a ceremonial affair uh, practiced by both Christians and Muslims. And it's a medium of family and social gathering. So, Please tell us if there are any interesting differences you've noticed about the coffee cultures here in Ethiopia. Well, thank you for uh, your question about coffee. Before I directly go to your question, addressing to your question about difference of the cultural difference between uh, Ethiopia and coffee, Ethiopia and Korea in uh, coffee preparation and drinking, I think it is important to tell you a little bit about uh, coffee, as you said. Ethiopia, the birthplace of coffee, is originated from Ethiopia, and the name itself came from the Kafa area, called um, um, Kafa is the people in the west part of Ethiopia, and uh, this is the birthplace of coffee, we believe that. And this coffee had a very good um, taste and wonderful aroma. Uh, currently, about 40 million population uh, of Ethiopians, their livelihood based on uh, coffee production, processing, and export, uh, totally in the coffee production and the marketing process. Uh, and the coffee is a major uh, export uh, commodity for Ethiopia. And we earn uh, our uh, hard currency from coffee. That's the, 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 the best uh, product to uh, export. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, um, it is a medium of gathering for Ethiopian families and uh, neighborhood neighbors, not only families and neighbors, we drink coffee together with our neighborhood. Uh, whenever we have guests uh, in our homes, we invite our guests. The first invitation is coffee as the gesture of respect. Uh, so uh, our visitors, before we give them food or other things, we invite them and we ask them, please sit down and have coffee. 
this is a, the cultural procedure uh-huh. to, to to honor a guest to ha- to a house so this is the, the way how we do it tradition uh, these days the the traditional uh, coffee making process is very popular in urban areas and among young people mm-hmm. uh, you Koreans you drink uh, one cup per a day on average 100, 360 uh, or 350 cups per year but in Ethiopia uh, minimum to maximum like five six and more cups of coffee people drink per a day uh, so we we drink a lot and we consume like 40 percent of our production at home uh-huh. Therefore, uh, we have very big uh, coffee consumption uh, at home. Mm-hmm. But the, for me, the, the, as you said, the, um, the culture, I mean, the coffee drinking, the uh, interest and demand is still increasing in Korea. And whenever you know, I go, I, I see coffee shops, uh, cafes, even in the city, uh, cities and even in the countryside. So this shows how the consumption is increasing very much. And we can see also the, the coffee export, 31% increase since 2016 to 2020 in Korea. It's not, from, it's not only from Ethiopia, but all of, uh, all of the, from all of the world. So this shows how the coffee uh, uh, demand and the, the coffee drinking culture is increasing in Korea. So the most important thing is um, not the difference of the cultures to how to drink and how to make coffee. The most important uh, relation is for me, interesting thing is the relationship between Ethiopia and Korea is we produce very good brand of coffees called like a gacha if you know them, Sidama coffee, mm-hmm. uh, Kafa coffee, uh, Geisha coffee, Jimma coffee. These popular brands right. are here, here in Korea. And the preference of Koreans is changing from artificial type of taste, flavor, to the green coffee beans flavor. We are the best destination for this type of flavor. That's the Gachafe or Sidama or Jimma or any part of Ethiopia. We have very good flavor of the green coffee beans. So we are trying to uh, connect the Korean companies who, who are in the uh, coffee production, I mean, the coffee marketing industry, uh, to link them with a single origin coffee. That means starting from the farmer, who the farmer, how he, he farms his, uh, his, his coffee and how he processes, and then who is the exporter, with what, what quality coffee is processed, packed and shipped to its final destination to Korea, and it, it, it will be roasted and distributed in the Korean market. So this is a very important and uh, very uh, interesting issue for us to link uh, two countries and the, the current generation of Ethiopia and Korea. But still, uh, the interesting thing is we drink hot coffee. We don't drink cold coffee or we don't put ice in our coffee. In Korea, people put uh, ice in their coffee. They drink cold coffee. This is another culture. We uh, make our coffee at home, uh, mostly at home. Of course, we, we do. We, we drink at um, cafes, restaurants, hotels, or coffee shops. But basically, we drink at home. Every day when I go to my residence to lunch, I drink coffee at home. Mm. Even, even if I, I, th- there is no need, but culturally, after food, it is a, a customary to drink or make coffee and give to the household. So in, when we see in Korea, people drink coffee at shop, in shops, in convenient, store, convenient stores, and other places. So the place where they make, and who is making coffee for the ultimate consumer of the coffee. In our case, households. In, in, the, in Korean case, the, the market. Right. So this the difference, interesting differences, how things, are, things differ here. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, uh, these are the differences, but I want to stress, we are very keen to serve co- investors who are working in coffee industry in Korea, who want to import Ethiopian coffee, which is very organic, very good flavor, which has very good flavor and aroma, with um, 
very good connection uh, to bring Ethiopian coffee for coffee and for Korean consumers with a single origin and very good original type of flavor. Uh, so I, I would like to offer Korean uh, companies to work with us and to show my sincerity and uh, the readiness of my embassy to work with them to increase our relationship. I mean, you're the perfect person uh, to promote trade between the two countries as you served as the Minister of Agriculture and Lifestyle previously. But please tell us a little bit more about coffee. How much? So you drink about five, six cups a day too? Uh, uh, pardon, can you say it again? Yes, so do you also drink about five, six cups a day? No, I, I, of course I drink coffee with milk. Yeah. Uh, Maximum twice a day, two cup a day. Oh, okay. So uh, I I enjoy my coffee black, uh, but uh, how? So how? What's the best way to drink Ethiopian coffee? What's the best way to enjoy it? Do you have lattes and cappuccinos there, or do you you just like to mix milk, or do you like the to have your coffee sweet in Ethiopia? You know, because for example, in Southeast Asia, they have their coffee very sweet. So um, please advise us on how to enjoy the Ethiopian coffee in the best. It's, it's depend upon the, from one place to another place. Okay. Uh, mostly uh, we Ethiopians, we drink uh, black coffee mm -hmm. with salt, so not with sugar. Interesting. And in urban area, people drink coffee with sugar, but mm -hmm. with, with uh, minim minimum uh, amount of sugar they put in their uh, their cup. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, we drink macchiato, and currently, uh, this time, uh, these days, uh, cappuccino is becoming popular, in the, especially in the capital. But uh, we drink, we call it macchiato, that means we put, uh, we put milk to our coffee and drink with it. And uh, mostly we drink black coffee with minimum uh, sweetness. That's good. So let's... Uh... Uh, drift apart from the trade for a little bit and uh, talk about the uh, defense relationship for a moment. Ethiopia was the only African country to deploy combat troops during the Korean War, and we are still very appreciative of that. And the stories about their undefeated battle record are very well known to us all. And after nearly 70 years since the outbreak of the Korean War, and the alliance forged in blood between our two nations. What's the status of uh, Ethiopia ROK defense relations and how do you expect this friendship to evolve going forward? Um, thank you very much. Um, the relationship between uh, Korea is not limited to our uh, contribution during the Korean War. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, since then, of course, we became very uh, 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 related people, uh, our relation is cherished by blood and cemented by blood. Since then we have very good diplomatic relation uh, and uh, this relation became people to people relation and currently it became investment exchange relationship. So uh, when we consider the relationship of defense sector, uh, currently we have um, cooperation and training capacity building and supplies. But uh, I, I think there is a very um, big room to improve this relationship to higher level. And uh, for this, uh, your question, I can say this one and we need to do, there is much to do. Okay. And, um, you know, we learned about Lucy uh, quite some time ago, and President Barack Obama of the United States once said at a state dinner that Ethiopia was the uh, birthplace of humankind and Lucy is our oldest ancestor. And Lucy, you know, is the uh, more than three million year old and most complete skeleton of an early human ancestor. It's a reminder that the people of the world are part of the same human family, but it's also a reminder that fairy family is largely forgotten half women. The history of women has been punctuated by various hardship, conflicts, struggles, and triumphs. 
and their stories have been frequently overlooked and omitted in the, in, uh, over the course of the time. And as we celebrate the Women's History Month this month, and we'd like to take this opportunity to hear from you about Ethiopia's efforts um, in the realm. And please, uh, can you point us to your country's recent achievements in gender equality and women's empowerment? Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, noting uh, about uh, the beginning of the people is from East Africa and it's particularly from Ethiopia. Um, that Lucy is our uh, ancestor and all of us, the complete human, human structure was started from East Africa, especially from Ethiopia and Afar. Uh, when we come to uh, women empowerment and achievement in this area, we need to see with, in which areas, if we evaluate the issue of gender, can we can address the issue of um, women question. The first and the most important area is access to education. Uh, for the last um, two decades, mm -hmm. uh, education opportunity for Ethiopian girls and women, increased, especially for Ethiopian girls, uh, was, was improved very much, uh, greatly improved. Access at all levels from primary to tertiary is improved, but still there is a huge gap we need to improve. The other thing we, and the Ethiopian government focused is improving um, health care program to improve uh, the, 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 uh, the situation of the women in the, in the rural area at urban setting too. In this area, health services and uh, health extension programs expanded greatly, and this improved maternality uh, issues and early child care issues, which improved the issue of women. And uh, we uh, tried to build um, for every village, 5,000 people, we are a, a country of about 110 million population. And mm -hmm. for every 5,000 people, we try to build health posts. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the purpose of this health post is to serve at household level, especially focusing on the need for women, for family planning, maternity issue, other uh, women, uh, I mean, women health issues. For this purpose, for every village, for 5,000 people, the Ethiopian government committed itself to recruit, train, and deploy women health agents. The purpose is, number one, to uh, create a job opportunity for women, uh, girls who, are, who graduate from high school. Number two, in rural village, women are uh, shy to tell their problem to men. So when we deploy girls, they tell their problem, their pain, and the situation they are in to the, to, to the, the, the girl, I mean, women health extension agents. Through this process, the health uh, coverage and the medical situation is improved very much. Uh, before uh, we introduce health extension service, women, they don't want to come to health services to deliver it. They wanted to stay at home and they tried to give birth at home. This was very dangerous for their health and for their lives. But after we tried to introduce this type of health program, they started to come to health stations and have uh, uh, the service supported by uh, professionals. So this is uh, some way of intervention that uh, the European government was uh, tried to improve for Ethiopian women, and this is an achievement, Ethiopian women and this achievement. Another area is uh, we have a good um, uh, um, mechanism mm -hmm. to nominate women for empowerment. For example, we have women president, we have a woman uh, Supreme Court president, that means chief judge. Uh, we have 50% of cabinet at the ministerial level. And we have 40% of our parliament are women out of 548 seats. 40% of them are women. This is not only for a federal level, we are a federal government, but all we have regional government and regional councils or regional parliament. This is uh, similar with all regional cabinet. Mm -hmm. And the participation is increasing. But this doesn't mean it is enough 
and we are on the good track. We are on the right way to bring achievement and the quality and uh, uh, improve the women participation at all levels. Uh, but we need to work very, very, very hard to improve. Thank you. And uh, last question. Prior to becoming an ambassador, you were a politician and you had many responsibilities, uh, including being the Minister of Agriculture and as Minister of Education, uh, which was from 2013 to 2016. And it goes without saying that education is something Koreans take very seriously, and I'm sure you do too. So while you're in charge of the Ministry of Education, Ethiopia and Korea signed an MOU to strengthen cooperation in the fields of human resource development in science and technology. And you've also spoken at universities in Korea about international cooperation and the role of higher education institutions. So can you please uh, share with us some of the success stories between the two countries in the educational sector and how you think this important area of cooperation should be nurtured? Uh, thank you for asking me this question. And I would like to start to uh, reply to, on this question from the courts once Nelson Mandela have said, had, had said. And it, I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which uh, you can use to change the world. This is really a wonderful uh, quote by this uh, great African leader. And the world leader, of course, he was a world leader too. And because I said this is a great quote, because if we see Korean development after Korean liberation, you Koreans focused on universal education from 1948, uh, since from 1948. This universal education coverage uh, brought remarkable change in Korean uh, uh, economic, political, and societal arena. Because of that, current uh, in this time, in this time, Korea became a global one of the global uh, economic uh, powerhouse in the world. So we should learn, and we need to learn how Koreans bring brought this miraculous economic development in a reasonably in short period of time. If we see the details, the, the details is in the education to uh, innovate or to bring technology from somewhere and to, uh, uh, to transfer to your situation. Education is very important, uh, the powerful instrument. So in the case of Ethiopia, we tried to learn from Korea many things, from your uh, technology development, innovation. We tried to, from your science, and every, everything, including your curriculum development. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we tried to talk uh, and still taking Korean professors to our universities. And some of uh, Korean professors, they had uh, lead and create science universities in Ethiopia. This is a very, very they created the, the, this type of situation in Ethiopia. And this is very good for us. So, um, what we wanted to uh, work with Korea and uh, we needed to work is, is still, we wanted to bring our students to Korean universities. This, is, this, this has two, two reasons. Number one, to, uh, to capacitate our uh, citizens and to learn from Koreans and go back and serve in our universities, in our, our laboratories and in our institutions. No, number two, we learn your culture and discipline, how your uh, intellectuals able to bring this miraculous economic development by leading research, by leading science, by leading technology for your industries. So this is very important and we uh, try to work and cooperate in this field. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to reach out some of your higher education uh, institutions to Pro give us, to offer us scholarships, not only to teach our students, but to equip our students with technology capacity and the capabilities. 
I mean, what is Korea most well known for among your students back home? Is it well known uh, for K-pop or food, or do they know Korea because of the North Korea issues? I'm just curious. No, we uh, Korea is uh, most known in Ethiopia for science and technology. Ah, interesting. And uh, for IT and these fields, of course, K-pop. Uh, we we appreciate that culture is is uh, booming here. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's trying to reach all over the world. Mm -hmm. But in, in Ethiopia, mostly uh, Ethiopian youngsters, uh, Ethiopian intellectuals knew Korea about science and technology and IT developments. That's really interesting to hear. Um, yeah. Thank you. And uh, Your Excellency, that completes our session. And I can't believe that we covered all the five questions in, in such uh in, in the small amount of time. And I would like to thank you again for, uh, for agreeing to, uh, for the ambassador interview today. And I really hope that uh, we'll have uh, a time to get together soon to, uh, for coffee. And thank you uh, I am yes, hoping thank you very much. to of share course, with I, 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 Ethiopian I, coffee with you. <laughs> yes, of course, I'm going to invite Ethiopian coffee and you will taste it, Ethiopian coffee. Great. That sounds great. Thank you again, Ambassador. And uh, until we see each other in person, please uh, stay safe and healthy. You too. Thank you. Thank you.